How Peter became a fisher of men. How did Peter, an unschooled ordinary man with well-documented flaws, have an extraordinary personal ministry? In the epic story of Peter's life, Jesus prepared him in three main ways. In these same ways, each one of us becomes a fisher of men too. What is a disciple? Disciple comes from the Greek word methetes, which translates as pupil or learner. When used in conjunction with Jesus, it came to mean an adherent to the person and teachings of Jesus, a follower. Used as a verb, it is the process by which God calls us to salvation, equips us to live the Christian life, and sends us to live with Jesus and for his glory. Inherent to this, we are sent to help others become disciples too. Like you and me, Peter was also called equipped and sent by Jesus. Let's look at how he became a fisher of men, and how each one of us becomes a fisher of men too. Calling ordinary men into an extraordinary relationship. Peter and his brother Andrew owned a small fishing business. Not long after Jesus began his public ministry, he said to them, Come, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Mark 1.17 Jesus simply invited them to start a relationship. As Peter heard those staggering words, his heart flooded with the prospect of finding a higher purpose for his life. He took a sabbatical and left everything to tour with Jesus. He witnessed firsthand the early miracles of Jesus. When Peter saw Jesus cast out a demon, heal his mother-in-law of a high fever and preach throughout Judea. When they returned to Peter and Andrew's hometown, Capernaum, Peter decided he needed to give some attention to his fishing business. Not long after that, Jesus asked Peter for a small favor. Jesus was trying to speak to some people who had crowded around him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats pulled up on shore by Peter and some other fishermen who were washing their nets. Jesus got into the boat that belonged to Peter and asked him to push a little offshore so he could teach the crowd. When Jesus finished speaking, he told Peter to put out into deep water and let down his nets for a catch. That must have been an awkward moment. A carpenter telling a fisherman how to catch fish. Plus, every fisherman on the Sea of Galilee knew you catch fish at night, not during the day. By this time though, Peter had enough experience with Jesus to trust him. So he said, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Luke 5, 5. They took out the boat, let down the nets, and caught so many fish that their nets started to break. Then they signaled for the other boat to come help, and they filled both boats with so many fish that they started to sink. When Peter saw what Jesus had done for him, he was unexpectedly overcome by emotion. Peter fell at his knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Verse 8. He was, in a word, awestruck. Once Peter called Jesus Lord and confessed his sinfulness, Jesus said, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Verse 10. And so began the illustrious career of the man we associate with passion, boldness, courage, curiosity, and yes, impulsiveness and flaws. How God calls men. Today I have a pretty good idea of what Peter went through, and I'll bet you do too. That's because not much has changed in the area of calling men to discipleship in 2000 years. Like Peter, I loved my work but wondered if there was any larger purpose to life. Was life just a random, senseless, pointless, wasted experience? At the time it sure seemed like a futile and meaningless exercise. We're here, and then we're gone. Life is hard, and then we die. So what? But then God began to awaken within me a yearning to know, to really know, Him. When I first started thinking seriously about God I had pictured Him high, but not that high because at the same time, I thought I was pretty high too. As I started to get to know the Lord however, I realized He is so much higher and holier than I ever thought or imagined. Then one day I felt I didn't even deserve to be in his presence. The glow of his glory was like a halogen floodlight that exposed what a sinful creature I am compared to his holiness. I felt shame and guilt to even be in the presence of something so heavy, so holy. Awestruck, I hit the deck. Like Peter, I said in essence, go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. But that awestruck moment of humility, faith and repentance is precisely what Jesus is looking for the starting point of how God makes men. So if you belong to God, you also have been called to be fishers of men. By spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, thank you for listening God bless.